easier for them to accrue so, a surplus because they don't have to pay taxes. Right, so, so they it gets have a pretty, little edge. Pretty complicated, doctor. Tell us how well, you here's, resolve this. Well, here, okay, first, it is true that things are changing. There are probably over time, it looks like, you know, less businesses providing health insurance, more people will be in this individual market. So it is timely that we look at this. However, the proposal before us is one-sided. It says we're going to have an assessment, all the carriers will pay in, and, and that'll cover difficult to insure people. By the way, we'll keep our tax exemption. And by the way, while we're at it, we want to take out the Attorney General's oversight. That's the other part of their proposal. The Attorney General currently has the ability to step in and regulate them if, if rates are felt to be too high, but mm -hmm. they propose taking that mm -hmm. out. They also propose more flexibility in investing their surplus. Now, they were established as a charity by the legislature, and again with the approval of the people of Michigan, to make health care affordable and available and accessible, and their surplus should be used to meet that ends, but they would like to have the freedom to invest it in any other business. That's the, that's the proposal ahead of us. So their proposal is broader than just let's look at the individual market and do this high risk pool. It's also let's take away some of our oversight, give us more freedom to invest our surplus into for-profit companies, mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to, to broaden our, our subsidiaries. They bought a couple years ago a long-term care company, for example, in Arizona. Mm. They have a workers' comp company in Wisconsin that they've purchased out of their surplus. So the question, you know, before us, is that really relevant to meeting their mission? And their nonprofit and their, status. And their nonprofit status. So they've raised some very good questions mm -hmm. here, and, and I don't want to totally dis dismiss it. No. There are things happening in the individual market that we should address. Consumers mm -hmm. need protections mm -hmm. when they call and they shop around. They need to be able to properly compare prices. They need some assurance that if they sign up and they're paying a premium, you know, that that insurance will cover them and that right. the policy won't change suddenly if they get sick. Very so important. we can work together to put some consumer protections in place, but the proposal in front of us, I think, is too one-sided. It favors, you know, Blue Cross too heavily. We can take it and turn it into a consumer protection mechanism and still help, you know, we want Blue Cross to be healthy and so, viable. So give us some of the highlights of what you'd well, like to propose. And you have had hearings. Mm -hmm. This this has been open to the public and I understand there still may be uh, some further need for hearings. Some further yeah. hearings, but not to delay it sure, ad infinitum, right. but what we're looking at, well, first we should remind the viewers that this passed the house our brethren in the state house with one hearing, one two-hour hearing, hardly any debate, hardly any discussion, and it, it only sat on their on the house floor for a week, and then it's been in the Senate now for several months, where we're studying it. We've had several hearings. We're going to have more, and what I anticipate as the chair of the committee is that we will be voting on this in committee at the end of April, and then it will come to the to the floor, where where you'll have a a shot at it. Um, so we are working on this, but what I propose is that we take the, the, the proposal in front of us from the Blues, which has some good things in it, mm -hmm. and that we work that to make it into something that will truly protect consumers, that would keep yeah. Blue Cross's mm -hmm. tax exemption, mm -hmm. but not create this assessment on all the other carriers. Mm -hmm. It would keep Blue Cross's special role, but it would also give them the flexibility mm to rate on the basis of behavior. Uh -huh. Just like uh -huh. I said mm -hmm. that it used to be illegal in the business market for carriers to give a discount for good behavior, the current law constricts Blue Cross's ability. They can't give a non-smoker who calls them a better rate. Mm -hmm. And if you are a smoker, if they could give you the better rate, that would give you incentive Absolutely. You know, to quit and then you could qualify for the yeah. lower rate. So what I propose is giving them the, the flexibility, the ability to do that, to reward good behaviors. Mm -hmm. They would keep their mission that they have now. We would not need to establish the high risk pool at this time, but we would continue to monitor the market and maybe there would be a time down the future when we would. And that we would also have some provisions in dealing with their surplus so that in the future, 
instead of buying out of state, you know, for profit subsidiaries, that surplus would be used to help the people of Michigan, to help us be healthier and to make care more available and, and affordable. You know, it sounds like such a common sense approach. And as it goes through the process, I hope many of the good things that you have just talked to us about will actually be implemented. Um, you're saying by probably the end of April, uh, you will report some bills out, and then the whole Senate will look at them. And then if there are differences between the House and the Senate pass version, of course, there will be probably a conference committee. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. But I think all of our, our, our viewers can tell just the level of detail and commitment you have to all of our citizens, business community, residents, and of course the insurance companies that will provide mm -hmm. these services. So you have not looked at it just in a you we know, need to look at the big picture. Way. You've looked at the we big should look picture. at the big picture. And if we can do a job, a better job in getting Michigan to be healthier, mm -hmm. insurance will be more affordable, and that is how we will insure more people. If you want to decrease the number of uninsured, it's easier if you have a healthier population. Well, I know that I just recently shared with you a letter I received from an attorney in my hometown who is part of a group insurance uh, through the bar, but in, all, in just four years, he's seen his rates really um, go extremely high, 80% more in four years. Now you're saying that isn't necessarily because the procedures or um, whatever it is medically that they uh, are have you know experienced over the last four years that hasn't so much changed it's other things and how are we going to look at that I mean it could be catastrophic for some people and for those people who are laid off and now have to access the individual market, you're looking at all of that. Yes, and it's very important, I think, that we retain the Attorney General's role. I see. Who currently, currently when Blue Cross wants to raise rates, they have to ask for permission. They apply to do that, and that is reviewed by the Insurance Commissioner and the Attorney General, and the Attorney General may intervene and say, no, your, your proposal is, is uh, too high, uh, we're going to have a hearing, and you have to show why they're going to go up this much. And in the past, the Attorney General has been successful in mitigating some of those increases. So the proposal before us would say, well, we don't need the Attorney General anymore. I disagree. We want that oversight. We want the oversight. So I, I would say we need to keep that in. That's very critical. So the oversight is an important piece of this. Blue Cross is a public you know, trust. Absolutely. They have this special mission and special privileges. And that comes, you know, with with some needs to come with scrutiny and oversight. Tom, if people want to get in touch with you, would you give us your Lansing phone number, also um, how to access your website, sure, or email you? Please give us that. Sure, they, they're. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm eager to have okay. ideas and input, you know, from people in your district. Mm -hmm and letters that I can share with committee members okay. on this issue. Okay, tell us your email. My, my email is SEN, as in Senator, SENTGeorge at Senate.Michigan.gov. And your telephone number, toll free? Uh, 866, um, let's see, uh, I'm going to give you my other one because I forget that okay, one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go uh, ahead. 517-373-0793. Excellent. It's been a pleasure to have you and we'll follow this through and maybe have you back to report on your success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. See you next month.